بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویورز ویلکم ٹو اے اسپیشل ایڈیشن آف ڈیفینس اینڈ ڈپلومیسی آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ سلطان ایم حالی ذوالفقار علی بھٹو ہی کاف اے پلیس فار ہم سیلف اینڈ اے پینتھین آف ورلڈ لیڈرز ان دی فرام دی تھرڈ ورلڈ ہو ویئر ان دی ٹوینٹی ایتھ سینچری اسٹرگلنگ ٹو اوور تھرو کلونیلزم اینڈ امپیریلزم ہی ہیڈ دی آنر ٹو رب شولڈرز ود سم آف دیز فیمس نیمس لائک ماؤز دنگ like Chuen Lai, like Gamal Abdul Nasser, like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and Salvador Allende. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto left a famous legacy, some of which makes us proud, but one of the important contributions he made was laying the foundations of Pakistan's nuclear program. So to remember Zulfikar Ali Bhutto on his death anniversary, We are honored to have in our studio today two very prominent panelists. We have with us a famous bureaucrat, former federal secretary, Mr. Tariq Mustafa, who was associated with the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission, as well as SUPACO and with the Defense Production Division. Welcome, sir. We have with us Ambassador Tariq Usman Haider, who has looked after the nuclear security of Pakistan and has also been talking about Pakistan's nuclear safety and security, but currently he is the f- at the faculty of the National Defense University. Welcome, sir. Sir, we find, or rather, let me describe a scenario for you. 20th January, 1972, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto took over as the president only a month earlier. The venue is Multan, and he has called an array of nuclear scientists and engineers. Nobody knows what he's going to talk about. But once in the room, he says, gentlemen, we want the bomb. Can you give me the bomb? And how long will you take? There was pin drop silence. The atmosphere was tense and electric. And then one of the scientists piped up and said, yes, we can do it in five years. And Bhutto raised his finger, three fingers, and said, three. I give you three years to make that bomb. Can you shed some light on that? Well, it so happens I was not present in that meeting because I happened to be abroad then on a working visit. And perhaps one may even say that what Mr. Bhutto spoke about, the visit was related to that. <laughs> We were already at it, you see. <laughs> But it is very clear that most Mr. Bhutto, th- through that meeting, laid a goal, set a target, and got the work going in real earnest, you see. But that was not the time that he thought of it in the 70s. I think he thought of these matters much earlier, in the 60s. In And fact, a, a book uh, which he wrote, sir, uh, in 1967, but its print came out in 1969, The Myth of Independence, he talks very clearly that India is likely to become a nuclear power and it will give it a tremendous advantage and Pakistan has to have its own program. Very, very right. Mr. Bhutto, whatever you may say, was a visionary. And one of his visions was this, that any self-respecting nation has to have access to nu- nuclear technology, whether for peaceful or for deterrence purposes. He was also aware, as you say, that the neighboring country, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Nehru, had also been equally clear on this. It was clear in his mind and he had given these directions also. The Nehru Baba friendship is well known. It was more than just friends, they shared this vision of the importance and significance of nuclear technology, again for both purposes. So, Mr. Bhutto was uh, <coughs> clearly conscious of this and as the young and dynamic minister in uh, President Ayub's cabinet, uh, he always sort of lent support to nuclear energy. 
I remember in the 60s, the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission was Dr. Ishrat Usmani, IU Usmani. And Professor Abdul Salam was the chief scientific advisor to the president. And often these two, Usmani and Salam, are known as Usmani Salam Bradaran because they were the responsible really for giving shape and strength to Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission. Both of these always could count on the support of Mr. Bhutto. He had made it clear to them that, you know, my doors are open. Although he had no direct responsibility, he was not concerned with nuclear and uh, atomic energy commission matters, but they could count on his support. But as Minister for uh, Natural Resources, he lent a lot of support to Atomic Energy Commission and also, I believe, uh, Ambassador Tariq Osman Haider, in 1962, when he became the Foreign Minister, that was the time India managed to convince Canada to provide them with a, a nuclear reactor. Okay. And uh, Canada-India reactor. Exactly. CIR. Yeah. CIR. Rapua, uh, yes. Yeah. 62 years. Mr. Bhutto used his charm and his guile and managed to get Canada to sign up one for Pakistan too, something which he inaugurated as president late in 1972. Yeah, well, there, sorry, there are two different tracks. One is the nuclear weapons path. India got the Cyrus reactor in the 50s, 58, which was unsafeguarded. Later on, they started getting from Canada RAP1, RAP2, which were the safeguarded uh, reactors for energy. So Mr. Bhutto uh, helped uh, the negotiation with Canada and to get the resources for Kanup. So it started construction, I think, in 67, and he inaugurated it in August 72. So uh, I think he, with the lack of resources, etc., he was quite pivotal in getting that because you need both uh, nuclear power for energy security and, of course, you also need it for deterrence. But let it be clear, uh, I don't think uh, the Canadians gave India this natural uranium-based reactor, the Cyrus or the Canada-India reactor, it's known as. Pakistan never uh, had that offer. That was on the cards, <coughs> under discussion, etc., etc., but it never materialized. The first reactor that Pakistan managed to get was the AMF Atomics from USA, an enriched uranium. It's a research reactor. While the CIR was not only research, but I think India sort of planned it that way. It had the capability to make plutonium. But uh, we see that in 1974, when India makes its first uh, nuclear test, codenamed Smiling Buddha, it did not come as a surprise because in 1969, as I mentioned that in the myth of independence, Mr. Bhutto had written, and I quote really because this shows his vision as you mentioned and his prescience. He stated all wars of our age have become total wars. It would be dangerous to plan for less and our plans should therefore include the nuclear option. Therefore, in 1974, after the Indian explosion, comes his very famous saying that we will be ready to eat grass if we have to, but we will get our own bomb. Your thoughts on the subject, sir? Uh, I think it was fairly well known, in our circles at least, that India was working towards it way before 74, well into the 60s. It was very clear, you know, things don't remain secret, it's known. We meet people and so on and so forth. So. Pakistani intelligence as well as people in those quarters knew and had a good idea of the progress on the Indian side. So it came as no surprise. In fact, you will remember after the 71 debacle, East Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India, made an announcement few months thereafter, I don't exactly remember the time, when she said that Soon you will be getting another very good news. But that news never came. People forgot about it. One view is that that was to be their first nuclear explosion which did not materialize and it slipped into 74. 